So if you're dealing with tinnitus or tinnitus, as all the cool kids call it, then I don't need to tell you how annoying it can be. And only second to that level of annoying is the horrible advice that you get on how to correct these issues. And we'll talk about some of that stupid advice and why it's so dumb in this video. But if you've seen any of my videos, you know that I really like to understand how things work, why they're going on, and the steps you can take to actually correct the underlying cause of the problem. Well, with tinnitus, for years, I would have client after client come to me and they would just see the problem go away and I had no idea why. I didn't really understand what was going on. I like to understand, well, if a person's constipated, it's because the body is sending too much water to the kidneys and not enough to the bowels or this acidification process is not working and slowing the stool down. I like to understand things. So for years, I didn't understand what's going on. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you how I was actually helping these clients and steps you can take to correct the problem so you can get rid of the hey, why don't you stop making noise in my head situation. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So people dealing with tinnitus can experience it very differently. Some people might have ringing or maybe a buzzing or a humming or a little guy named Frank saying what's going on for lunch. A lot of things can go on where the person actually feels like they're hearing something and it's really disturbing their day. But for most people, they're experiencing something where they're hearing something in their ear or some type of noise that can be incredibly annoying. And the reality is that there's a wide variety of issues that can cause the problem. And some of them can be significantly serious and some of them aren't. But it can be issues like autotoxic medication that a person can take, which means that those are medications that can be damaging to the ear in that structure. There can be some type of ear infection, which is actually really common because a lot of times people don't know that they have an infection in those canals because they're not creating any other symptoms. But this can be a chronic situation that's going on for a lot of people. Somebody, it can be caused by the irritations that come from smoking. Uh, it can come from um, someone having compacted wax in those canals. So there's a variety of issues that can create this. But in this video, I'm going to talk about the two most common causes for tinnitus and how they come about and steps you can take to correct those issues. And you've probably already tried a lot of things because the advice out there is quite bad. It's, it's quite annoying how stupid the advice is. The most common advice you see in the medical world or from a doctor is that, oh, you need to lower your salt intake and your caffeine. So now I'm sleeping through the day and all the food tastes bad, but I'm still miserable. So that really didn't work out for me. And they've actually shown that there is no indication that this advice is valid in any way and that these reducing these things has any type of impact on the tinnitus in any way. And I'll put a lot of links uh, down in the description below for some of the studies and data stuff that I've found to help you understand where I got this information from. But the advice seems bad. I've even seen advice that someone was like, oh, you should have kids because kids pretty much sing that baby shark song or let it go 24 seven. And that will drown out the buzzing in your head. So you don't really always want to listen to the advice that's out there. It's not always super helpful. But when you understand these things that I found with clients, you're going to see that, oh, that's something that I can look at and see, is that a problem with me? And when I take steps to correct those issues, does the problem go away from me or not? If it doesn't, then maybe I need to look into one of these more significant problems. So one thing that the medical world does agree on is that there does seem to be a connection between major gut dysbiosis and tinnitus. And they kind of feel like, well, the inflammation from the dysbiosis in the gut is creating problems for the neurotransmitters that go to the brain and to that ear area, or it's creating a neuroinflammatory response that's creating this symptom of the buzzing, ringing, whatever it is that you got going on. So they feel like that's basically an inflammation issue that's creating that. And most of the clients that were coming to me with this problem were not coming to me for tinnitus. They were coming to me to correct some other health issue. And I was helping them correct that problem and then the tinnitus would just go away and they would think, oh, he's just a leprechaun. That's what it is. And I didn't even know why it was improving. I don't know. You just work with me and then it goes away. That's pretty much all I had. And then what I understand now is that this inflammatory response that can come from this really troubled situation in the digestive tract can create enough inflammation that for some reason can create this symptom. And I really don't want to assume that we really understand why it's being created. I kind of want to assume that we sort of don't, but it does seem to match up with this inflammatory response and the inflammation that can come from these digestive troubles. So I was helping clients 
fix their digestive malfunctions because a lot of times these digestive malfunctions are actually creating a lot of these other symptoms that they were hoping to improve. And when we took the steps to correct these digestive malfunctions, that's when the ringing went away. So I was like, okay, this is really digestive related. And when we're looking at digestion, most of this dysbiosis comes about by bad guys getting in and setting up camp. And most of those bad guys come in when either stomach acid is not being produced correctly or the other side of digestion, which is the alkaline side of digestion, is bile flow is not working correctly. And it's, it's really common for someone not to be making enough stomach acid. And it's really common for someone's bile to become too thick and sticky to flow correctly. But in either of these scenarios, the digestive process doesn't work correctly. We don't have the ability to break our food down and pull all the minerals and nutrients out of the food. So we can have a lot of deficiencies that can create a lot of problems. But when we have these digestive malfunctions, we're also opening the door so the bad guys can come in and set up camp and create all of this inflammation. So that seems to be one of the most common causes of the problem, and that's what I felt that the problem was. And we'll put links in the description below for our videos on 10 signs of low stomach acid and another video for 10 signs of poor bile flow. So go to the description below, check those videos out, see if you're dealing with one or more of those signs that indicate that you may need to correct those digestive malfunctions. And we'll put a link to my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, in the description below in case you need that because chapters three and four help you figure out which aspects of digestion are not working correctly and steps you can take to correct that. And the book is available on Amazon, but I'm gonna put a link in the description below so you can get the whole thing totally for free. Now, the thing that I didn't understand was that a lot of these clients that were coming to me were coming to me to lose weight as well. So we were helping them fix these digestive malfunctions and then we were taking steps that would help them lose weight and then this tinnitus would just go away. And it turns out that the most common cause for tinnitus seems to be what's called hyperinsulinemia. And that's when insulin levels are really high. And when insulin is high, it creates a lot of inflammation. Well, my first goal when I'm helping somebody lose weight is first of all to fix any digestive malfunctions or they're, they're gonna have a hard time lowering their carbohydrate intake. And the second thing is to bring their carbs down so that insulin can come down. When insulin is too high, it signals the body to, hey, don't burn stored fat, we wanna store more fat. So I was trying to help these clients bring their insulin down so that they could lose weight. And it turns out that like 84% of the people that deal with tinnitus also have these high insulin levels. So when these clients were bringing their insulin levels down and fixing digestive issues, the ringing would go away. And whether it was the digestive malfunctions or the insulin being too high, I don't really know. And I don't care so much because the person doesn't deal with the symptom anymore. So these are really easy things that you can look at for yourself to see, am I dealing with these types of issues? And if I am, I can take steps to correct them and see, does the tinnitus go away? So for these clients, was the problem caused from inflammation from all the dysbiosis in the digestive tract? Or was it from inflammation from insulin levels going too high? We don't always get to know. But if you can easily look to see if either of these problems are an issue for you, then you can just take steps to improve them. So insulin goes really high, usually because a person is leaning on that insulin resistant side and the cells aren't listening to insulin so the body has to make a lot more insulin. So it's usually about insulin resistance that's causing that high insulin level. So what I want you to do right now is jump over to our video on how we become insulin resistant so you can understand that process and that'll lead you to our video on how to fix insulin resistance. I can't wait to hear about your results.